Today we'll discuss four corner opposition. We are going to learn how to explore a theme through opposition and conflict, how four corner opposition brings a story world to life, and how to create intricate plots. So what is four corner opposition? Well, in his book, The Anatomy of Story, John Truby says, better stories go beyond a simple opposition between hero and main opponent. And they use a technique I call four corner opposition. In this technique, you create a hero and a main opponent plus at least two secondary opponents. You can have even more if the added opponents serve an important story function. Now recall that an opponent is simply an antagonist. It's someone who opposes the protagonist in some way. And this is an image from John Truby's book, The Anatomy of Story, where we normally think of the opponent and the protagonist as just being opposed maybe on a single line. John Truby suggests that we create an opposition that looks more like a box, where we've got opponents on each corner of the box, which creates this four-corner opposition. But we have to remember the different ways that characters can be opposed. Yes, they can be opposed dramatically, or in other words, in terms of their goals, but they can also be opposed thematically, or in terms of the way that they approach life, and we're going to look at both. Now, dramatic opposition occurs when two characters are opposed in their goals. One character stands in the way of the other attaining their goal, and and typically, they actually both stand in the way of each other. So a couple of examples of this. I mean, we know this. This is the protagonist and the antagonist relationship, the hero and the villain, right? So it's Darth Vader versus Luke Skywalker. It's Mr. Incredible versus Syndrome in The Incredibles. It's Harry Potter versus Voldemort. It's each of these characters has fundamentally different visions of what they want to happen in the story world or what they want to happen in their own lives. And there's another character who stands in opposition to that. So we can create plots from dramatic opposition. When characters are opposed to each other, they each take action to disrupt each other's plan. So Luke Skywalker is trying to do things that disrupt Darth Vader's plan, right? He's trying to stop the Death Star from destroying all the planets. He's trying to rescue the princess, whereas Darth Vader is trying to stop Luke from interfering in his plans. And so when you have these characters that are dramatically opposed, when their goals are opposed, you create plot because the characters are consistently taking action toward their goals and foiling the other person's plan. So as a general principle, the more opponents you have in your story, the more intricate your plot is because you have more players that are enacting their plans and disrupting the plans of other characters. Now, sometimes this is good because it creates a more intricate plot and perhaps a more interesting plot, but we have to be careful because sometimes it can be more confusing. If we have too many opponents and we have too intricate a plot, it can be hard to follow. So just something to keep in mind. And an example of a dramatic four corner opposition would be something like Walter White, Gus Fring, Jesse Pinkman, and Hank Schrader in Breaking Bad. So all four of these characters oppose each other in various ways. Like for instance, Hank Schrader's going after Walter White, right? But he's also trying to catch Gus Fring and Jesse Pinkman. Uh, Gus Fring uses Walter, but he also stands opposed to him in certain ways. Uh, he's certainly opposed to Hank. So each of these characters has a very interesting relationship in their opposition. Now, thematic opposition. Thematic opposition occurs when two characters are opposed in their worldviews, beliefs, or approaches to life. So thematic opposition allows us to explore all sides of a theme. So let's look at a couple of examples. In Finding Nemo, we've got Marlin and we've got Dory. And fundamentally, they have different approaches to life, right? Dory is very carefree. She is all about surrendering and letting go, whereas Marlin is all about holding on and being dependent and controlling and preventing harm in others. And so they have fundamentally different worldviews, beliefs, approaches to life. But it's also important to note here that they are not dramatic opponents. They both have the same goal of getting Nemo, of, of getting him back, but they approach doing that very differently differently in, in a day-to-day -day situation. So it's interesting to see how they are thematically opposed rather than dramatically opposed. Now, in The Incredibles, we have Mr. Incredible and Syndrome. And these two are both dramatically opposed in their goals and they're thematically opposed. They have different approaches to life. Now, Syndrome believes that anyone can be super. Whereas Mr. Incredible, kind of through his actions, believes that only a select few can be super. Additionally, Syndrome is all about the ends over the means, and Mr. Incredible, as with most good characters, values the means over the ends. 
And in Toy Story, we've got a thematic opposition between Woody and Buzz. To Woody, being a toy is the most important thing in his life. But to Buzz, he has no concept of what being a toy even is. And so there's this fundamentally different approach to life between them. And by having these characters that have different approaches to life, we can explore the theme of the story. Now, there are other ways we can put characters in opposition to each other besides just thematic opposition and dramatic opposition. So we might have characters approach solving problems in fundamentally different ways. And Matt Bird kind of offers a suggestion in his book, The Secrets of Story. He talks about uh, characters who approach life from a heart perspective versus head versus gut. And the example he gives is in the original Star Trek, we've got McCoy, who is very much heart-centered, Spock, who is very much head-centered, and Kirk, who is very much gut-centered. And the three characters approach situations fundamentally differently. And we can use this four corner opposition to bring communities to life as well. So communities themselves can be opposed dramatically or thematically. So we can consider communities with different value systems, for instance, right? We could have a community that values duty. Uh, so they value obligation. They value responsibility. And we might have another community that values love. They value passion. They value going after your dreams. They value personal relationships over one's obligations, perhaps. And we could have a community that values faith over reason and one that values reason over faith, one that values ambition over satisfaction and gratitude, and one that values satisfaction, gratitude, and maybe even integrity over ambition or greed. And so we can also put these communities in opposition to each other in different ways. We could have one community that values duty and faith and another that values duty and reason. And we can have another that values love and faith and another that values love and reason. Right? And they could all have different reasons for valuing those things and having those approaches to life. And so these characters can be opposed thematically. But then through their thematic opposition, they can also have different approaches to their goals and have dramatic opposition as well. So what did we learn today? We learned that characters and communities can be opposed either dramatically or thematically. And we learned that they can be opposed in a four corner opposition way. Or in other words, there's more than just the protagonist and the antagonist or the protagonist and the opponent. We learned that dramatic opposition can create intricate plots. Generally, the more opponents you add, the more intricate the plot, although we do have to be careful here and make sure that the plot doesn't become muddled or confusing. And then thematic opposition allows us to explore a story's theme. Now, what do you want to learn about? Leave a comment below. Let me know what storytelling lesson do you want to see? What kind of topic do you want us to go over? Uh, leave a like, subscribe, uh, hit the bell icon, all that great stuff. And if you want to get more involved, uh, check us out at kingo.com, K-I-I-N-G-O.com, and check out our writing tips. And if you love storytelling tips and writing tips and craft books, we have a new book coming out in November. It's called The Structure of Story. So you can check it out by going to kingo.co forward slash pre-order or kingo.com slash pre-order. Uh, you can also check us out on Instagram at kingo creative, K-I-I-N-G-O creative, or on Twitter as well. And then if you want to get especially involved, we have a Patreon as well, patreon.com slash kingo, K-I-I-N-G-O. Thank you so much for being here. And until next time, happy writing.